Police in Jerusalem needed a water cannon after ultra-Orthodox Jews used a typical method of protest and set rubbish bins on fire during a May 16th demonstration against their government's plans to enlist them into the army. 20,000 protesters took part in the demonstration, supported by rabbis who warned protesters that army service would irreparably harm their way of life. Although it is compulsory in Israel for both men and women to serve in the army, ultra-Orthodox Jews get an exemption if they are attending a religious seminary, or yeshiva. Now Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's coalition government wants to remove the exemption and draft ultra-Orthodox Jews in order to share the national burden and reduce pressure on the middle classes. Many of the ultra-Orthodox Jews who received subsidies for their religious studies and to support their families were motivated to engage in the protest by Rabbi David Zeiserman, who told the crowd, The government wants to uproot our traditions and secularize us. They call it a melting pot, but people cannot be melted. You cannot change your way of life. When young French Muslims are in jail for minor offenses, they become easy targets for recruiters eager to convince them to become jihadists. Because many of the incarcerated Muslims come from communities blighted by poverty and unemployment, it is easy to convince them to become engaged in religiously inspired terrorism. While France is not the only country with a prison radicalization problem, it also occurs in Britain, the United States, and Afghanistan, it is particularly alarming in France, which has the largest Muslim population in Europe. France's population includes an estimated 5 to 6 million Muslims, and the majority are peaceful, law-abiding citizens. But the threat of a small number of homegrown militants has become a major concern since France sends troops to Mali to fight al-Qaeda-linked Islamists. According to Europol police agency, last year, 91 people were arrested in France on suspicion of religiously inspired terrorism. Once again, a representative of the Catholic Church in the United States is passing his opinion on scientific research. Scientists at Oregon Health and Science University announced they have produced embryonic stem cells by transferring the DNA of human skin cells into human eggs to produce embryos with the aim of producing stem cells for therapies to treat diseases which will not be rejected by patients' bodies because they will be genetically identical. Members of the Roman Catholic Church, who are theologians rather than scientists, are objecting to the latest advances in stem cell research. Cardinal Sean O'Malley of Boston, chair of the Committee on Pro-Life Activities of the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops, is confident about saying human cloning treats human beings as products and is inconsistent with our moral responsibility to treat each member of the human family as a unique gift of God, as a person with his or her own inherent dignity. Even after U.S. scientists announced that the advance in therapeutic cloning could not and would not pave the way to cloning a baby, Cardinal O'Malley is deeply troubled. He believes that the new technique might be used to create babies and maintains that creating new human lives in the laboratory solely to destroy them is an abuse denounced even by many who do not share the Catholic Church's convictions on human life. 